Hunter x Hunter episode 142, Needles X and X Debt. Again. The author must have been struggling with that during some point in the creation of Hunter x Hunter. Or at some point in his life. Now that pretty much sums it up. Properties of rubber and gum. Is he gonna say it again? We're gonna say that again, aren't we? What does your aura have the properties of, Isoka? Who knew the power of rubber and gum could be this deadly? I will never see either rubber or gum the same way ever again. Two simple things become so much more. There it is! Yes, we did it! Again. <laughs> Soka's no hack. You don't know the infinite applications of rubber and gum. He's got different kinds of shots. <laughs> this doesn't feel great for Goto. Goto's no slouch. I was so quick to judge Goto. <laughs> Again. Damn, so caught in his own gum. Wow, Goto setting the pace. And it was at that exact moment that Goto knew. <laughs> okay, I didn't know he could do that. Is this the rubber or the gum? It's the gum. You know what's coming to mind is weird, but... Oh man, there's just so many things this show can do. It makes me sadder and sadder as we get increasingly higher in the episode count, knowing it's coming to an end, and all the things I fantasized and fanficed about probably not gonna happen at this point, at least not in the show. But I think it would be so cool to see Hisoka versus Moro. They both seem to like really be the masters of this very particular thing. They have these relatively simple powers. They're not flashy, they're not really complex, but they've created this baseline, this floor, that's so strong that they're standing upon. And from there, they've pushed outwards to the maximum multiplication of the range of things they can do in conjunction so comfortably that their real power is allowed to shine, which is them devoting all of their resources to the chess game, which actually I think contains something really cool and brings IQ to mind even. On some level, it's that thing of it's when you've really hammered down the basics so that they're like breathing, that the fun really starts to begin. And to the deceptive simplicity of Hisoka's rubber and gum, two mastered skills in conjunction is way more than two skills. <laughs> Maybe the coin's coming back. And from where? Is he gonna fight the coins with coins? It's actually amazing. But... Right. Decoy. Is he headless already? He's already headless. How did I know that? It doesn't matter. Yeah. That sums up a lot of the show's tactics in a nutshell. It was all there from the beginning. Don't accept the binary choice and simultaneously use the binary choice to your advantage. Hunter Hunter and life. The battle of who can binary choice whom. There's an overlap with the political stuff. A light jog. Oh, something just so off-putting about her whole thing. Her whole design, everything. She's like that babysitter that hits you not because you've been bad, but because she wants to hit you. Actually, it's probably just the, the pigtails. My grandmother's motorcycle, you say. That's a story. Grandmother is a motorcycle. This is very Persona 5. And Transformers. And Final Fantasy 13? It's also horrifying. Are those teeth? Let's go know about this power. Imagine you're just, you know, running with your sister using lightning speed and then suddenly it's Grandma the Tank Engine popping up behind you on the highway. I'm not sure be able to fly. Charge his batteries. Contact his friends. Oh, 
You're also vulnerable in the air, right? Especially given Lumi's whole thing of I, I can't kill you, but I can blow up your vehicle and run you off the road. Ooh. Got a big hurt coming. What? I love how this love triangle is, ha is happening just totally without Kalua. I don't think Kalua's there. Goto. Goto got the Kai treatment. Moral has a long recovery. I mean, he's either right or Kalua should explain something. I mean, Illumi's terrible. I don't want to take Illumi's side. I do understand the concern. That just makes Hisoka excited. We've seen a lot of this, but at the same time, we haven't really seen any of this. Oh, they're lollipops. Sure. Kalua knows well. She also can use it himself, kind of like Shellnark. And the supply of soldiers. Great vegetables. He broke because they have a rule book for every occasion. I know this is Kalua, I know it's justified, I know Illumi is terrible. Is this not Kalua using someone else to do his dirty work that he can't do? He's truly a Zoldic, more of sweating. The smoke monsters make for a good match though. Oh yeah, they mentioned his commandment stuff. Somebody's down for reforming it. This this has got to be broken all the time. Right. Is this the connection between the two parallel stories in this arc? He's not my brother. Let me put that idea in my head. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's a lot of love lost. Yeah, it's intersecting. Here we go. Wow, let me get, to get about to get the fist of the Hunter Association. This is Zoldic. This is weird. This is a whole can of worms, though. Hunter Society is crazy, but it seems to be functioning? <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. You know what I mean? There's something there where God is it wild and crazy, but it's running. It could be a lot worse. To open up the avenue where hunters can attack hunters, to start changing the rules around because it fits one particular situation in a society this dynamic feels very risky to me intuitively on first thought. Suddenly Kalua enters politics. Also, that was a bit ominous the whole I'll do whatever it takes to crush him. This raises a whole bunch of questions for me. Would it be a spoiler to look up the Ten Commandments? I'm so curious. I wonder what qualifies as a heinous act in the hunter world. Well, Yorio got away with murdering Jing. It's not visiting your son in the hospital, a heinous act. I'm also really curious where Ahsoka falls in this because, you know, he doesn't really have a loyalty to anyone. There you keep. Go. The Hunter Illumi War. And what is his ultimate name? I always knew everything I believed was always right. Relatable. That's Wow. In the middle of the election, no less. Play loyalty. 
so play cool. fealty. When the politics arc started, I was saying how one of the games is not actually to make points, but to try to be the quickest to paint your opponent into a corner using a label that is just a stand in for bad. It seems like it often devolves into, or at least a very large part of it is a branding thing. What I thought about later is that of course that works the other way as well. You want to be very quick to paint yourself in the thing that everyone has sort of taken for granted as being the good, you know, the symbol. This is a very topical time to watch this art. So just naturally in the course of my life, I've been exposed to a lot of rhetoric. And this becomes almost comical once you start to see it, how a lot of the things that are addressed at large audiences don't really have any informational content. It's like saying words, you know, like saying positive words. A big one is freedom. It's like Obviously, <laughs> like who is not for freedom? Like, are there any political audiences out there that are thinking, boy, I really wish somebody would come along and enslave me. Slave Master 5000 has my vote for sure. Also, just at a personal level, I have my own views about America and what makes it unique and special. Freedom is not really one of those things. Freedom also is a very complex topic. Freedom is obviously a goal that comes with various costs depending on what area, and there are many areas you can talk about to which it's applied. And America in many ways has settled on non-freedom for certain things and great freedom for other things. So like this universal banner of freedom that actually has no specificity, you may as well just campaign under a flag that says like good, you know, which then of course makes your opponent not under the banner of good, which makes them bad. You know, like it's just so basic. Freedom good. I like freedom. You like freedom. You like me. Maybe they actually really are in awe of Netero, but my gut sense is that they just have to sort of pay lip service to Netero because Netero equals good. We've collectively agreed to that. And actually, even if we haven't agreed to that, it's been circulated so long and repeated so often that nobody would dare voice distaste for Netero and his policies because it would just open you up to attack. Even if people agreed with you, they wouldn't voice support for you and you would lose the optics battle in this really bizarre panopticon of stated belief. Like if this is real politics, they will say in the true spirit of Netero, we will. And then they'll say the opposite of what is the spirit of Netero. And it doesn't matter because it doesn't mean anything. It's just a symbol. It's a flag. Yes, it's for Netero's will. It's what Netero would have wanted. The thing that's the opposite of what he did. This guy gives me M. Bison vibes. Rockwood just invited chaos. Yes, wisdom, integrity. Of course. Wisdom, good. Integrity, good. I'm inspired. Look at you driving. That's cute. God, I remember when I made fun of the hunter exam for running? Yeah, we finally intersected. I was wondering. It felt like two different stories. But here we are. And that's how Kalua became the de facto leader of the Hunter Association. Accidentally. Not like those three weren't waiting for an opportunity. Also, I'm totally sure that these three are doing this for the good of the civilians. You know, they really care about the Illumi threat. It has nothing to do with their own ambitions, their leadership aspirations, just real deep rooted love and responsibility, just like the rat. I'm also sure that these amendments to the rules are totally just for this case, will not have any other application that is self-serving and definitely isn't a short-sighted strategy where the tools you use to fight your enemy become the tools of your enemy. Surprise Pikachu face. I honestly would watch a Chimera Ant arc length version of what they want to do with the Hunters Association because it's really Really interesting. There are so many issues they could bring up, and yet we haven't heard any of them except superficially. There will be reform, <laughs> allegedly. We will reform and we will make things good for the spirit of Netero. I don't see how that could be made any more clear. What's that? You you don't agree with the reform? Well, that's just very non-Netero of you. Funnily enough, probably exactly what Netero wanted. He just wants the highest form of potential, whatever form that takes. He's laughing from his spot in hell.